somewhere under those clouds is the next mountain I have to climb. <laughs> I hope I don't get there today. I hope the clouds lift before I get there because that looks cold. It's, it's actually sprinkling. <laughs> so maybe I didn't miss the rain. <laughs> maybe I walked right into it. But it's also sunny, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> So I only got a little bit of a spritzing and it looks like the the mountain I'm supposed to climb is basically combing the moisture out of the air. So it kind of makes no sense to sit around and wait out a storm that's like a day away walking from me. So I'm gonna just try to get as far as I can get. It's pretty windy. I find a sheltered spot. What is this thing? Oh my God, is it a, a plane? Oh. An engine? So I basically walked about 16 and a half miles to get about six miles out of town. <laughs> and I thought maybe um, the original trail that you can see on the topo was, it's like closed or something because it's private property or something now. But it's actually a road and there's a shuttle service that can take you up to the trailhead you know up the old Arizona trail to the to the junction of this new trail <laughs> it's kind of silly so I don't know it was beautiful and the, the walking was easy and pleasant it's only about I don't know two o'clock in the afternoon and I went 16 miles that's not bad so I'm gonna get some water and take a little break and decide where to camp next or where to aim for to camp <laughs> yeah there it is it explains it right there i could have taken this south trail route and it would have been seven miles but instead i did this temporal canyon gardener canyon route which was 15.3 miles so oh well should say she was hiding and her bull was up the hill. I just decided to uh, just keep moseying. <laughs> well, I could see the trail was going to climb a lot more steeply and I didn't want to get into those clouds. So I stopped at about 430. There's been a lot of nice campsites up here. 
I um I could have camped up here, probably had a more level campsite. I I think I set my pocket tarp up three different times <laughs> trying to get it to be level, but <laughs> it didn't really succeed. I slept well anyway. And it, I was really warm last night, but man, it's freezing up here. So I'm kind of glad I just was where I was at. It's a beautiful sunny day, not a cloud in the sky above. Well, there's a little bit of a cloud above my destination. So I did the right thing. <laughs> I don't know how visible this is going to be, but right there is Miller Peak. Did you see it? That's the first mountain I climbed. Now I'm climbing, I think it's Mount Wrightson. I'm almost there, I think. So this is the junction to climb the actual Mount Wrightson Peak. It's pretty long though. It's almost like a little more than two and a half or about two and a half miles so it add a five mile detour so i'm going to skip it and just carry on <laughs> From Wrightson to my campsite later, I pass through many climate zones, from pines and cedars to oaks and junipers to finally an oak savanna. I haven't seen anybody on trail for days, but I finally saw somebody as I was looking at the turkeys and it was masochist, so I got to say hello to him. <laughs> Along the way, I hiked with masochist for a spell and talked about trails with him. He hikes too fast, so I told him I'd slow down, but maybe we'd see each other again. It was here at Kentucky camp that I had cell service and learned my 30 year old bird named Fergie had a stroke. I hope I finish the hike before she dies.
I finally found a campsite by some water tanks. There is another woman camped here. I ate a lot today trying to reduce my food bag. I can't believe how cold it is today. So I camped uh, near a trough and some tanks and the water in the trough is nice and clear. And I looked ahead and I don't know, it sounded like all day there would be murky cow ponds and stuff. So I just threw in five liters, almost five liters of water. And I'm just gonna carry that all day. And Hopefully that's enough for the day. Maybe top it off with one of these tanks <laughs> or ponds. Don't look too bad so that I have a little extra to camp. I'm, there's at 26 miles from my starting point, there's a lake that people say doesn't taste very good. I don't know. I, I don't think I care what it tastes like. I'm not sure if I can get there today, but if I have enough water to get just short of there, I'll be fine. Of course, I haven't accounted for stuff like this. <laughs> wow, maybe there'll be a uh, nice clear water for me somewhere today. met a guy named Clean Shave that's him back there and he just told me I was on the 100 mile mark so I made it 100 miles it's 100.7 so I missed it a little bit but I got to celebrate with him and have a little, have a little chat with him Cactus Garden. So I just paid online for a permit to walk through Saguaro National Park for seven days, a seven day permit. <laughs> I'm about seven miles away from the Interstate 10 under underpass. There's a the trail goes under through a tunnel, and you come out the other side, and it's painted like a snake's face. And I think I understand why, because for the last several hours and for the next several hours, this trail is constantly just snaking in and out little bitty ins and outs it's like it was made for mountain bikers to have fun but it could be a lot more direct not only does it go in and out and in and out but it constantly goes up and down and up and down it's totally a snake so it totally makes sense why they painted the underpass like that
20 miles by two. I guess I still got it, as long as it's not too steep. Okay, so 20 by three, but I still got it. That's pretty good. So I made it to Cienega Creek, but I don't know if it's safe to camp here or if you're allowed to. I'm really close to civilization. So, and I hear like dogs barking or something and there's a train track nearby. I don't know. I think I'm gonna keep walking as much as it is such a nice place. Water, trees. First trees I've seen in days. Well, okay, maybe one day. It's really noisy down there. So I've left the creek and I don't know, I guess you can hear these trains for a long time and then there's highways. <laughs> I hope I find a place I can sleep. It's amazing how the desert has changed just since crossing Sienega Creek. It's a lot, um, it's a lot wetter over here. I mean, the plants actually have leaves, <laughs> like these, these ones here. And um, there's a lot more green and there's places where you come around and there's wildflowers. It's really beautiful. It's really hard to capture in a photograph but i'm really loving hiking through the desert here and also the cactus are greener here the saguaro and the ocotillo it's, it's wonderful this is like the best trail I saw a bird fly out of one of those holes. It's a pretty big one.